I've been crucified with Christ I've been crucified with Christ I no longer live but Christ lives in me We welcome you to our Bible study of the Apostolic Doctrine of Eschatology. We are continuing our subject about the arrival of perfection. This is going to be part two of that subject. We know all prophecy was fulfilled at the time of the final resurrection. There was a guarantee that the gifts of the Spirit would continue until the day of the Lord, the resurrection, the return of Jesus, and the judgment. There was no further need for the prophetic office. Notice what Daniel chapter 9 verse 24 said. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. The seventy weeks of Daniel, they have been fulfilled. If the prophetic office has ceased, then all the gifts have ceased at the end of Israel's covenant age. Some say that which is perfect refers to the completion of the Bible. Others say it refers to the maturity of the church. Some say that it is the second coming of Jesus. There are also some who say that it is the coming of the new heavens and the new earth of Revelation chapter 21 and chapter 22. That is the new Jerusalem, which is perfect. They are all correct. The Greek word perfect is teleos and is translated in the epistles as mature. God's goal for the church was to come to maturity. The gifts of the Holy Ghost were for the purpose of maturing the body of Christ. When the church came into a face-to-face -face relationship with Jesus, she entered into a perfect maturity and no longer needed spiritual gifts. Those gifts were transitory. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11, 12, and 13, the Bible said this, He gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. What was being perfected here in this scripture is the fact that redemption was perfected. Redemption was complete. Salvation was made whole. Individual people will never be perfect in their bodies. But the state and condition of redemption was made perfect when that which was perfect arrived in A.D. 70. Those gifts were used to bring the church from a state of infancy at Pentecost to adulthood in A.D. 70. The word perfect in Ephesians 4.13 is translated mature and is the same Greek word as teleos in 1 Corinthians 13 and 10. Maturity is the perfect man defined as attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. In 1 Corinthians 13 and 10, it says, But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. The law could not make you perfect. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 1, notice what the scripture says. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. And in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 23, the Bible said this, To the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, 
and to the spirits of just men made perfect. According to Strong's, the word perfect in the Hebrew meant complete, whole, undefiled, upright, clean, full, restored, all, every wit. Also, according to Strong's, the word perfect in the Greek meant completeness, full age, to fit, to mend, to restore, to accomplish, to finish, to complete, to consummate, to finish. Jesus was the author and the finisher of our faith. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2, the scripture said this, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. In Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, the Bible said this, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what happened in A.D. 70 when the Lord Jesus Christ returned, that which was perfect. He did exactly what he said he was going to do, and he did it when he said he was going to do it. In Daniel chapter 9 and verse 24, the Bible said this, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. And this is what took place in the year A.D. 70 when the Lord Jesus returned. When that which was perfect arrived, it arrived in A.D. 70. Verse 24 said to seal up the vision and prophecy. That means prophecies and prophets are sealed, meaning the end and complete fulfillment of all prophecy. In Luke 21 and 22, Jesus said these are the days of vengeance when all things that are written would be fulfilled. What Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13 is that prophecy will end when the perfect comes. Prophecy ceased with the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70. Ephesians 4.13, the word till, it means termination. Daniel said the prophecy will cease. Paul said the same thing in 1 Corinthians 13 and in Ephesians 4. To seal up vision and prophecy would mean the cessation of the prophetic office through the fulfillment of all prophecy. The gifts of the Holy Ghost were to continue through the last days, the last days generation, from A.D. 30 to A.D. 70. The last days ended in A.D. 70. 1 Corinthians 1, 5 through 8 said, All the gifts were in operation, and they were looking forward to the day that the Lord would return. They were eagerly, eagerly awaiting for the coming of of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Abrahamic promise involved the redemption of Israel, the true spiritual Israel, who is Zion. It is the heavenly Jerusalem, the bride of Christ, the true Israel of God. In Isaiah 52 and verse 8, Isaiah said that Israel would be in a face-to-face -face state when God, in the fulfillment of the Abrahamic promise, redeemed Israel. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Israel was to see eye to eye when the Lord restored her. When was the Lord going to restore Israel? At the consummation of the 70 weeks of Daniel. That was going to be at the destruction of Jerusalem. In 1 Corinthians 13 and 12, it said, face to face. According to the Greek language in Strong's, this expression, face to face, means presence, as used in Genesis 4 and 14, the face of the Lord. Also in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 12, face here also means presence. In the Old Testament, the face meant presence. In the New Testament, 
Testament, the word presence is face. The word coming is the Greek word for parousia, which means the presence of he who comes. There is a lot of confusion today about spiritual gifts. Do you know why that is? It's because those gifts were for the last days. When the last days ended, so did the gifts. This is why so many believers have no clue as to what their gift is because they don't have a gift. The gifts of the Holy Ghost were a God-given capacity in which the Spirit supernaturally ministered to the church. If the gift of teaching was functioning today, don't you think that all teachers would be saying the same thing? If it were a supernatural function of the Spirit, would the Holy Ghost be teaching different things? In conclusion, perfection arrived in A.D. 70. The Old Testament and the New Testament were perfected together. Both groups, the us of the Old Testament, the us of the New Testament, and the them of the Old Testament would attain life together in that city at the same time. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 10, this is what the scripture said. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. And verse 40. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Perfection is here. It's been here since that which is perfect came in A.D. 70. Notice Hebrews chapter 12 verses 22 through 28. But ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that you refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. There are many, many lessons that are on YouTube today that we have that we put forth. They're, they're just very clear and precise things that are pretty shocking to a lot of people because you have to get away from trying to literalize everything that the Bible is saying. Same thing with that which is perfect. Jesus is here today. He's been here since A.D. 70. How many times have we heard the preachers tell their congregations, the Lord is here to meet your need? I've often wondered, how is it they can say that when yet, how can he... How can he be far away and yet be here at the same time? Why would he want to come back to a place where he's already at? Jesus is here today. The New Jerusalem is here today. It's a spiritual city, a spiritual realm. Remember, heaven is not geographical. Heaven is a realm that is dimensional. If you're in the kingdom of God, if you've been baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, you are in that spiritual kingdom that is here today and has been here since the first century. Any question or comment, you can contact us by email at the New Covenant Apostolic Church at gmail.com. I've been crucified with Christ. 
I've been 